Hey, good morning, everybody. All of you adults, I'm really disappointed you didn't join the kids in the countdown from 10. I mean, that was a missed opportunity if I've ever heard one. Next time, we'll do better. We'll practice that, all right? Hey, it's Raised to Life Sunday. Anybody excited to be in the house today? Yeah. If you don't know what Raised to Life Sunday is, you will find out for sure in just a little while. But we are celebrating those who have given their hearts to Jesus in baptism today. They are, are making a public declaration of their faith, and we are glad to be a part of that. So we'll get to that here in just a little while. But first, we want to say a special welcome to those of you who may be here for the first time. If you are a guest with us today, we have a gift for you, and we would love to give it to you. And the way that you show us you're a guest is you take the card in the seat back that's right in front of you. There's a pocket there of cards. It says, I'm new across the top, okay? That's the card we're talking about. If you'll fill out that card and give us a little bit of information about yourself so we can get to know you, you can take that to the Connect Desk after service in the lobby. They'll give you a free gift if you give them that card. It's that simple, okay? If you're a returning guest and you have a free T-shirt voucher, you can exchange that for a free shirt at the merchandise table that's just a few steps beyond the Connect Desk. If you'll do that today, those are they're simply for you, I promise. There's no catch. We're not going to call you tomorrow and ask for money. We wait till Tuesday for that, okay, because that's the kind of people that we are. No, it really is. It's just we want to know that you're here because we want to get to know you and we'd say that we're glad you're here, okay? A few announcements and reminders. We do not have service tonight, okay? Our small groups have been rocking and rolling. It's a lot of fun. You don't want to miss those when we do have them. We'll get back to that next week. But tonight, no service, and we'll start back for those next week at 6 p.m., okay? But coming up on Tuesday night, what happens on Tuesdays at the assembly? 180, that's right. 180 is our recovery ministry where we walk with those who are coming out of addiction or celebrate those who have found freedom from their addiction. That happens every Tuesday night. It's a lot of fun. Dinner in the back at 6, service in here at 7. You do not want to miss either of those things, okay? But men, where are the men at? Raise your hand. Let me hear you. Are you here, guys? All right. We had a great time at Mid Summit this weekend. If you didn't go, you missed it. But you have a chance to hang out with us this Thursday night at 7. That's why we call it M7. It's four men at 7. It's really creative. We thought really long and hard about that, okay? So be here, guys, Thursday night at 7. It's going to be a great time. And then Friday night, somebody say Friday night. Now everybody else, say Friday night. Great job. You guys are really participating today. I like it. Friday night is our 5K glow walk run, okay? For those like me who don't want to run, it's a walk, okay? Um, but that's a fundraiser for 180 that has a lot of time and preparation has been put into it. Uh, that's going to be at the Bloomfield Park Friday from 6 to 10. A lot of things, even more than walking and running. There's going to be food and, and activities. It's going to be a great night and a great fundraiser for 180. So be there Friday night. And then Saturday is the Identity Conference. That's right. That is a conference for our youth students, and so parents, if you have signed up your kids or students, if you have questions, talk to Pastor Aaron and Ashley before you leave today. You want to be a part of this great weekend that's coming up. And then the following weekend, we've been took, looking forward to it for a while, but the women's conference is coming up less than two weeks. Yeah. Ladies, you are still able to sign up, okay? If you're thinking, oh, no, I missed it. You missed the early bird registration that would have guaranteed you a T-shirt. Um, but you can still sign up online. Go to the church Facebook page. Follow the link. All the information is online. If you have questions, you can talk to Sister Wanda. But, ladies, I promise you, I've, I've been part of some of the discussions, just enough to know there's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of prayer and preparation going into that weekend. You don't want to miss the women's conference. It's going to be a, a great weekend, okay? That's all that I have for you. But, hey, can we pray together and just set our hearts right as we go into this great Race to Life Sunday? Feel free to stand with me if you like to. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you that we get to be a part of celebrating those who have given given their hearts to Jesus, and they're making a public declaration of faith here in this water. Lord, I ask that you would help us to remember as we worship you that moment when we gave our lives to you, when you saved our lives from the pit. You brought us into the light of your love, and let that affect how we worship you today. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Let's worship him together.
Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Anybody excited to be here for Baptism Sunday? We're excited to be here, too. The Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us, won't you come down? Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us, and won't you come down? Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us, and won't you come down? Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound, when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Amen. You know, this week as I was preparing, I was thinking about all the people that are going to get in that water today and the, and the transformation that has taken place in their lives. 
the public profession of their faith. The, they, they go into the water. It's an outward expression of an inward transformation that has been made in them. And I got to thinking about what it means to be that dedicated to something. And, and Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter actually says that this baptism is how we identify with Christ in his death and resurrection. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, he says, For Christ suffered once for sins, the righteousness for unrighteousness, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. And then you go on down to verse 21. He says, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So like I said, it's an outward expression of an inward transformation. And I, I got to thinking about what does it mean to let God totally transform you like that? To, to take you from where you were and make you completely different. And, and you're, you're sitting there, you think, well, Joe, you're supposed to be doing ties. What's that have to do with ties? Well, I got to thinking about what it did to me when I was transformed by the power of God. And I could stand up here and tell you with tithing that, that, that God wants to richly bless your life, and that's true. I could say that God wants to multiply your gift. That's also true. But what I would rather tell you is that God wants to transform your life, that it's, it's more important to be so transformed that out of just being transformed, you give. Out of being transformed, you serve. Out of being transformed, you choose to be baptized. Out of being transformed, you choose to serve a God who is so mighty that he's chosen to pluck you from the pit of sin and make you new and change your life completely. So this morning as we pray, we're gonna pray over our gift. We're gonna ask God to multiply everyone's gift in this church. I want to see everyone here richly blessed. But more importantly, I wanna see God move in such a way in your life that you're closer to the cross than you have ever been. Father, this morning, I pray that you would anoint this entire service. Lord, I pray for all those that are going into that water that they would raise up in, in new life, Father, transformed and ready to serve you in a greater way, Lord. I pray for every single person here that you would meet us where we're at, that you would impact our lives, that you would draw us closer and closer to you, God, that we would never be the same from this day forward. I pray you to know every aspect of this service and that, Lord, that everything that we do here would bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. about it 
You're king over all, and I know who you are. You're steady, constant. I have this confidence. Mercy, goodness. I have this confidence. Oh, awesome and mighty. I have this confidence. Hey, I know who you are. Defender, healer. You are my confidence protector, shepherd. You are my confidence, Jesus, Savior. You are my confidence. I know who you are, and I know who you are. So come hell or high water, you're still on the throne. You are faithful. You're in control, there's no question about it. You're king over all, and I know who you are. So come hell or high water, you're still on the throne. You are faithful and able. You're in control, there's no question about it. You're king over all, and I know who you back and we're gonna sing that bridge one more time because that bridge it talks about how we can have confidence and who God is and he is an unchangeable God he is unmovable he is unwavering he is steady and he is constant just like how we sang and he is not a liar he is not a deceiver he's not making plans against us. He's not setting us up to fail. No, he is a loving God. He cares for each and every person in this room. He has a plan for each and every person in this room. And so we're going to sing this bridge again. And it says that we can have confidence. So I want us to sing it with confidence because he is an unshakable God. So let's sing it together. You said constant. Mercy, goodness, I have this confidence. Oh, awesome and mighty, I have this confidence. Hey, I know who you are. Defender, healer, you are my confidence. Protector, shepherd, you are my confidence. Jesus, Savior, you are my confidence. I know who you are, defender, defender, healer, you are my confidence, protector, shepherd, you are my confidence, Jesus, Savior, you are my confidence, I know who you are, and I know who you are. So come hell or high water, you're still on the throne, you are faithful and able, you're in control, there's no question about it, you're king over all, and I know who you are. So come hell or high water, you're still on the throne, you are faithful and able, you're in Control. There's no question about it. You're king over all, and I know who you are, and I know who you are, and I know who you Still see the steeple, little church on a hill. There's a line at the altar, 
Every pew had been filled I remember the water The choir singing old hymns There's a peace in the valley As a preacher man he said The name of the Father The name of the Son The name of the Spirit Washed by the blood, buried with Christ, raised a new life, baptized. I can still hear the sermon. All the people said, Amen. There's a gift of salvation. Spirit rushing in. There's a peace like a river. As the preacher man said, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Spirit, washed by the blood, buried with Christ, raised a new life. stained glass the windows and the stories they tell all the memories as clear as the day i was there all those years i spent running you're giving me back oh i'm stepping in oh i'm stepping in oh i'm name of the father name of the son name of the Spirit, you're washed by the blood, you're buried with Christ, raised a new life, baptized. Oh, I've been baptized. name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Spirit, you're washed by the blood, you're buried with Christ, raised a new life. still see the assembly we want church on a hill good morning church it's good to see y'all here this morning how many's glad to be here yeah Man, y'all did an incredible job. You did. Yeah, it did. Acoustical set, unprepared. That's good. Good. I'm going to speak very briefly. And everybody said? No, you're supposed to say, oh, it's bad. Way to go, June. Good to see you kids. What y'all doing in kids' church this morning? Sing? That's good. That's good. Well, we, y'all beat us. We didn't dance in here. We're going to go to Mark, uh, Luke chapter 16. If you want to go there, I'm going to be brief. And I'm going to read what well, I've got written down. Why do we make such a big to-do here at Raise, Raise the Life Sunday at the assembly? Why do, we, why do we make it a big deal? It's new life? It is a big deal. It's one of the biggest deals we can do to show the Lord how grateful we are. It gives new believers an opportunity to take a stand in front of others in such a way to remove all doubt that they have met Jesus. Going public with our faith so that all can see and know that we are not ashamed of our embracing his baptism. We're gonna stop and have prayer right now. I don't know what's going on over here, but we're gonna pray. Father, whatever the circumstance and whatever's going on with my brother, my sister over here, 
But God, we pray your hand upon them. God, your protection would be about them. Lord, that you would raise them up, Lord, just the way that you can and only you can do. Pray, God, there be no fear and no, no unbelief in, in this whole church congregation. But God, we step in faith and we believe you, God. We ask for your hand to be upon the whole situation in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Uh, it allows the whole congregation to join in with them in their obedience to Christ. Everybody gets to be a partaker and everybody gets to worship and, and be glad of what God has done. And lastly, it is the least that we can do to show our gratitude, and that's going to be the term today, to show our gratitude for what Christ has done. I tell you what, if, if we all can look back in our past, the greatest thing that we can do is to show our gratitude in every area of our life, everything that we go through in life, everything that we've accomplished in life, because he has made it possible. Gratitude, what does it mean? It's a sincere response to an action that is toward ourself, toward, for or toward ourself. There is something about a gratitude, a heart of gratitude. How many's ever been to Chick-fil-A? How, how many wants to go after church? Okay. They're gonna put one in, how many's heard they're gonna put one in Dexter? They're not going to, but that, I just wondered if anybody, I, I just wondered, I just wondered. I didn't mean to be rude. Gratitude, gratitude turns what little you have into abundance. Gratitude is so much more than saying thank you. We think that we say, if we say thank you, that's all that's required. But it goes even farther above that. It's, it's our actions, it's what we do, it's how we react and how we respond all the time is gratitude. Gratitude changes your perspective on your world. Your whole world changes, and your whole perspective changes of what you're going through and where you've been, and your family, and all that God has done. Luke chapter 17, verses uh, 11 through 17. I'm going to read this, and we're going to talk about gratitude just for a minute, and we're going to get started with uh, getting in the water. And I will warn everybody, the water is, it, it's, it feels good. <laughs> as, as, as one of my sons says, it feels real good. Uh, it don't feel very good. It's cold. Okay. But you won't be. <laughs> by, the time that, by the time that me and Josh get out of it, we will be numb. The rest of you will just be wet. Okay. Chapter 17, verse 11, it says, And it came to pass, he went to Jerusalem, and that he, and that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten lepers, which was stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy upon us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he had returned, saw that one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell in at his feet, at the feet of Jesus and gave him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? I thought, man, what a great example of everyone in their church today. We need to be the one that, that comes back. The one that comes back and is grateful for what he has done. That shows real gratitude. And it isn't something that, that is necessarily about glorifying us and bringing the attention to us. It's about giving him attention and glorifying him with our body and, and how we respond. And everything and everything we do, this should be the congregation. When people, we go out in the community, everybody doesn't ridicule. Everybody says, man, those people are the most great, grateful people that I know. But it's something that has to come from within. It's understanding who Jesus is in your life. It is. It's understanding who Jesus is in your life. I'm grateful all these kids are up here. It's incredible. But these kids need to learn now about the heart of being grateful. There were 10 lepers that knew they couldn't approach him, so they began to lift their voices. Now, one person could have lifted his voice, but you get 10 men lifting their voices, needing the touch of God, and Jesus paid attention. And he didn't have to go near him, he didn't have to go touch him. He just said, go and show yourself to the priest. And so they all went, and all of a sudden, one of them realized that he was already healed, and instead of going any farther for approval of man, he went back to the source of his healing. He was grateful for what God had done in his life instantly. And the sad thing is, he was a Samaritan. Not that Samaritans are sad or, or bad, but 
Were the other guys Jews? They had already been sentenced to death. They had already been separated from their kids, from their wife, from the friends. Only a life of misery existed for them. But they still found faith to ask. Verse, four, verse 14 says, simply go your, so show yourselves to the priest. Can you, can you imagine the priest and all those guys can bring it up to you for observation, to inspect them? The priest had to be impressed, moved. Hesitant, bewildered, full of questions as he began to ask him questions. He asked the lepers. Verse 15, one of them had to go back and run to Christ. And he was a Samaritan. And why did he go back? What was so unique about him? He had been taught from a young boy how to be grateful. Whether he was a Jew, Samaritan, wherever he was from, he was taught to be grateful. I know... In the crowd today, there's all of us adults are just sitting there. We're not really moving. We're just sitting there listening. And I got a little buzzes, a little bees all up here. They're up here talking, moving forward, all this stuff. But they are learning to be grateful and they learn it from us. If you are an adult and you are a parent, you need to be grateful for what you have and what God's done in your life. And from this day forward, absolutely. And they stay forward, everybody that gets submerged in water, they need to be grateful for what Christ has provided for them. Because he has provided hope when there wasn't any hope. He's provided freedom where there used to be bondage. Today we have people of all ages being baptized, but not because of being entitled. They will be showing their willingness to get baptized because of their gratefulness. Just as the one leper was grateful for God has, what God had provided. This morning, let's glorify God through other people being baptized. Now, some of you will clap, some of you will go to sleep, some of you will do whatever. But this morning, stay focused. We're gonna see God do some amazing things in baptism service this morning, amen? Amen.